What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel here. My name is Nick Howell and thank you for joining us for this series on cloud volume service for Google Cloud. In our last video, we showed you guys how to create your very first volume in cloud volume service just by giving it a name, a capacity, and naming a protocol. And in our example in our previous video, we used NFS v3. But in this one, I wanna show you guys how we're bringing a brand new protocol support to Google Cloud by showing you our new support for SMB. Tune in, grab a drink, and enjoy. So here we are in the Google Cloud dashboard where we left things off. There's a few extra things that you might see in here, but you can see AppVol 1 that we created in the previous video, as well as some new things like different service levels and some SMB volumes all the way up to, we've got one in there that's 10 terabytes, various sizes, various service levels, uh, various protocols and different regions and availability zones, all kinds of stuff right here in your Cloud Volumes dashboard native inside of Google Cloud. The big thing to call out here really quickly is that to date, you didn't have the ability to do SMB natively inside of Google Cloud. You had to roll your own or come up with some way to do that, which could lead to 3x the costs that you would normally have when you were using uh, SMB inside of Google Cloud. So with Cloud Volume Service from NetApp, you now have both native NFS and SMB that works directly with Active Directory integrations and things that we're going to show you here in this video today. So let's head over to the Active Directories tab, set up our Active Directory, configure it, uh, and basically what this is doing is creating a computer account in your Active Directory that has access to create volumes here. Uh, you can see we've got one configured already in here, uh, but let's take a look at some of those settings. So if we click on edit in the menu, you can see where we're going in to edit these settings instead of creating a new one. If you were, if you didn't have one yet, you would just create a new one. Now, what this is is the you need a service account or some account that can has that has the ability to create a computer account inside of your Active Directory. That is the key thing to understand here. So whether that's the default administrator, uh, domain admin, or some service account that you have, that as long as it can create computer accounts and register them into an OU or into your Active Directory, that's what's needed. Now, as we go through this, we can step through, put our, ad, uh, our credentials in, username and password. We're gonna put our uh, domain name in, which for us is cadtest.local. Uh, we'll put in our DNS server, which can just be your DC1 or whatever uh, domain controller you're using for DNS. We can also add in our NetBIOS name for this computer account. Now that is what the computer account is going to get named inside of Active Directory. So you wanna make sure you're using something that's recognizable, maybe give it some kind of flag that it is for creating cloud volumes inside of Google Cloud. If you have multiple clouds, multiple regions, whatever naming conventions you or your company has adopted, continue to use those. And of course, last but certainly not least, we're going to choose the region that we're going to put this in. And we wanna make sure that we put it within the same region. The, uh, an interesting part to note here is that for every region that you are using cloud volumes, you need to have an Active Directory account. You'll need to create one of these for each region that you're in. Now it is a regional service, so it doesn't matter if you're across availability zones, A, B, C, all the way up to F, it, that's irrelevant. You can have one uh, AD account to be able to create integrated SMB volumes as long as it's within that region. So now that we've got that created, let's head over and check out our volumes. We can go over there. We're gonna take a look as well at our Active Directory as it exists today, just to show you guys that we do have an actual Active Directory here running in Windows uh, as an instance in Google Cloud. And you can see that the domain name and the computer name of our D DC is exactly the same as the, in the a uh, IP address is the same as what we put into the form there. So let's go over and create our first SMB volume. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna give it something unique that we that's different than what we named before. So we'll call this one SMB Vol 1. Uh, we wanna make sure we put it in the same region, uh, that US Central one where we have our other stuff. Uh, we're going to set it this time, instead of using Extreme, we're gonna use uh, Premium because we wanna show you how the per terabyte multipliers work. So we're gonna give it a size of five terabytes. This time we're also going to choose SMB, make sure you do that. And again, we're going to choose the VPC where our instances are located. Still, uh, uh, that VPC is located in US Central One just like everything else. This time as well, we're going to go into 
uh, the snapshot policies and show you guys how snapshots work in this video. Uh, it's something we didn't cover in the last video on NFS and the in introduction to it, but we want to make sure we go through it this time and we're going to show you some examples of both how to recover individual files and snapshots natively within your Windows server, an instance, right? So you can do hourly, daily, weekly, or monthlies. You can choose how many you want to keep, and it'll just keep a rolling amount of snapshots throughout the entire process. So when you get to that fifth snapshot, when it takes the sixth one, it's going to delete the oldest one, and it'll just roll forward as things go through like that. So here's our volume, SMB Vol 1. It has been created very quickly. You can see it's five terabytes. Uh, and if we look our, use our cheat sheet like we learned about in the last video, you'll see we give you one for SMB as well. So you get whack whack SMB server and your full path. So let's jump over to our Windows machines and we're going to see how we actually mount this. If you've ever mapped a network drive to a Windows machine, you're golden. It's exactly the same. You don't need to do anything different. Right click on this PC or the C drive or wherever and do map network drive. Let's go over and do the exact same thing over on server two. We can pull that one up, same exact process. Right click on this PC, map network drive, and you're finished. It's near instantaneous how quickly it is. Again, all of these live in the same region of uh, availability zones. They're all going to be able to talk to each other based on the confines of your VPC. And any writes or changes you do, such as this Ubuntu 64-bit, uh, ISO that we're using. We're going to use this as an example to copy things over. So let's make a copy of this over and wow, look at 400 megabytes per second. We are sustaining over 300 megabytes per second to that mapped volume. Wow, that is crazy, crazy fast for SMB. And guys, that's the multiplier right there. That's the big thing to understand. That's, your, that's only at the premium service level, but since we have a five terabyte volume, we're able to multiply that up and get that additional bandwidth and throughput to be able to drive over 300 megabytes per second sustained, sustained. That was cooking on a two gig file. It went in about three seconds. That's pretty awesome. So we're gonna do some more tests with that. We'll see how that works out. Uh, we've got a big FIO performance test for SMB as well here at the end, so stay, stay tuned for one second. Let's do a couple of other things really quick. Let's jump over to the other Windows server uh, and take a look and we can see the file there now as well, just instantaneously. Uh, it's available immediately. What we're gonna do is change the file name here. So let's back that guy out and we'll jump back over to the other Windows server and then the name's already changed. Look, this, this all makes sense. It's the same volume mounted to multiple instances. But let's jump in here and do an FIO command really quick. And let's take a look at what the performance looks like. So we're gonna go grab this command. We'll paste it in here. Pause the video right here if you wanna grab a copy of it for yourself. You can see all of the options that we're using. This takes some time. Since it's a five terabyte volume, it's gonna take about five minutes. Think about a minute per terabyte. So I'm gonna speed up the play of the video here. I'm not gonna chop anything. I'm just gonna speed it up so it goes faster. But you guys can see the runtime that it took to run it and we'll get to the end here where we see the actual performance and throughput of the test. So there it is, 300 megabytes per second. And if we do that math, it's 64 megabytes per second times five. Five terabytes of our volumes capacity and at the premium service level, 64 megabytes per second. There it is guys, 314 megabytes per second to be exact. Let's jump over and look at snapshots. Now, you, based on your schedule that you set when you created the volume, you may have any number of snapshots going already, but you can also just on demand create a snapshot. Let's say you're rolling some patches. You wanna make sure they test, but you wanna have a fallback plan. Let's give the snapshot a name of like before change. Again, choose the same region your volume's in and we'll choose our volume, SMB Vol 1 and Bang, immediately we've got a quick snapshot here that we can roll back to as needed. And you'll see the usage go up as you increase the number of changes. Think of that as the delta difference between your original snapshot and where you are at today. So if we look at the volume as we have it today, there's the CVS.0.0 .0 file that the FIO performance test created, as well as our Ubuntu desktop ISO image that we had. But let's say a crazy user comes in and just, yeah, I don't need this ISO anymore, bang, gone. Oh, wait, but wait, we needed that. How, how do we, 
How do we get that back? Well, let's right click on the volume on the map network drive natively in Windows. Let's go to restore previous versions. There it is. There's our snapshot natively integrated into Windows. We can go back in and we can choose that and we have a couple of options here. We can revert the snapshot wholly or we can per file grab it, bring it back and manually copy it back to where we want it to go. And there we go. If we come back over to the Google Cloud dashboard, we can see our SMB volume here. It is five terabytes in size. It is in US Central One, and we were, have now tested that it has 350 megabytes per second. So there you have it, guys. Native support for SMB now available from NetApp Cloud Volume Service in Google Cloud. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to know more information, Check out this blog post over on cloud.netapp.com's blog from Chad Morgenstern showing how we got all of this performance out of the NetApp Cloud Volume service in Google Cloud. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. More videos coming such as the next one where we're going to highlight some of the more advanced data services available to you in Google Cloud thanks to NetApp Cloud Volume service. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Take care.